Hey guys, Jake from 8020 Media here, bringing you some more GM and Chevy content. Um, today we're going to be talking about the 5.3 liter Vortec engine, also commonly referred to as the Vortec 5300. Um, the 5.3 Vortec is a small block V8 that was introduced in 1999 um, and was produced all the way through 2014. Um, throughout that 15 year lifespan, the engine did go through two separate generations. Um, the one caveat being they are referred to as the Gen 3 Vortec and the Gen 4 Vortec rather than Gen 1 and Gen 2. Um, this is because the Vortec engine is part of GM's uh, small block engine family. This engine family goes all the way back until the 50s and had two previous generations before the 5.3 liter was released. Um, and starting with the Gen 3s, that's when GM came up with the uh, marketing nomenclature of the Vortec engine because of its supposed Vortex technology that it has inside of it that creates an air vortex that results in better air to fuel mixes. So anyways, we have two separate generations here, which we'll refer to as the Gen 3 Vortec and the Gen 4 Vortec. Um, the Gen 4 Vortec was eventually phased out for what is now known as the Ecotec 3 engines. However, the 5.3 liter does still live on. Um, the Gen 3 engines lasted from 1999 until 2007. Um, the most popular engine code for those is LM7. Um, the LM7 engine variations, what's used in your Suburbans, Tahoe, Silverado, Sierra, and all of your bigger kind of GM and Chevy trucks. Um, there was a flex fuel version of the LM7 that was known as the L59, which was also relatively common. Uh, but overall, the LM7 and the L59 are kind of the two uh, most prevalent engine designations. Both the Gen 3 and the Gen 4s did have five or six different kind of variations of the 5.3 Vortec, um, but most of the other variations were things that were used in like their sprinter vans and things like that. Um, the Gen 4 engine was made from 2007 through 2014, um, and the LC9 is the most popular engine code for that as well. And so since the LM7 and the LC9 are kind of the two most common engines used in all of your trucks and Suburbans, um, it's important to kind of distinguish some of the differences between the two of them because while they are similar engines and while the LC9 was built off of the LM7, there are a few kind of important distinctions that play a role in reliability between the two. Um, so first off, the LM7 was a cast iron block. Uh, for the LC9, for the Gen 4s, they switched to aluminum. While aluminum is more lightweight, it's generally not nearly as strong as cast iron, and so the blocks on the Gen 3 Vortex are typically a bit stronger. Um, additionally, while flex fuel was available for some of the Gen 3s, it was only in that L59 version, and so it was only used in certain 5.3 Vortex. Um, for the Gen 4, it was added to all of the 5.3 Vortex. So all of the cars from 2007 plus have flex fuel capabilities, which means they can run E85 fueling. Um, another thing is that variable valve timing was added in 2010. Um, but probably the most important distinction between the two was that all of the Gen 4 engines received active fuel management, also known as displacement on demand. Um, active fuel management is the system that shuts off half of your engine cylinders under ideal operating conditions for fuel economy purposes. And so it turns your V8 into a V4, you know, when you're driving on the highway to, you know, save in gas mileage fuel economy. Um, for anyone that knows GM and Chevy products, um, you'll understand why this is a reliability concern, but we'll go ahead and save that for later in the video. Um, since we have two different generations, I broke down the common problems between the two into their respective generations. So for the Gen 3 5.3 Vortec, uh, the common problems are cracked cylinder heads, um, intake manifold and intake manifold gasket failure, as well as fuel pressure regulator failure. Uh, with the cylinder heads, there was a company called Castec that manufactured cylinder heads for the Vortec engines they had a few kind of manufacturing deficiencies to where the cylinder heads would commonly crack. Um, 
However, it was only a few kind of production runs that that happened with. And so not all cast tech heads crack and not all LM7s use the cast tech heads. So this isn't necessarily the most common problem, but it was common enough for GM to release a technical service bulletin on it. Um, and it is a more, you know, kind of severe problem in the sense that replacing the full cylinder heads a bit more expensive and uh, a bit more serious of a job than some of these other problems. But overall, not extremely common, so not a huge reliability concern. The biggest symptom that you get with that is coolant loss, and they call it a phantom coolant loss since um, you won't actually be able to tell that you're losing any coolant. You'll just get the coolant light that pops up. Um, and you'll have to frequently kind of top off on coolant. Um, second issue is with the intake manifold. Uh, the manifold's made out of plastic, and so just naturally um, from heat, and, you know, heat cycles of the engine, and over time it's prone to cracking. Um, it's not the, you know, most serious problem. It will re uh, result in um, it'll result in a vacuum leak that'll lead to some performance-related issues, but you know, replacing the intake manifold and the gasket with it is uh, an easy fix for that. And then the last thing is the fuel pressure regulator, um, which is what's responsible for spraying fuel into the intake ports. Um, this regulator fails frequently, which then impacts uh, fueling and fuel spray, which can lead to a number of performance issues like rough idling, uh, misfires, hesitation while accelerating, uh, start no start issues and things of that nature. Um, overall, those are really kind of the three most common problems with the Gen 3 5.3 Vortex. They're extremely stout, extremely reliable engines. The block, the internals, and everything are very strong and um, shouldn't have any issue lasting to the 300,000 mile mark. We've actually owned an LM7 Gen 3 5.3 for over 20 years. Um, our family bought it way back in the day and we now have 220,000 miles on it. We've had virtually zero issues with it along the way, and so it's been extremely reliable, a great engine, and honestly hasn't even had a, a water pump or a fuel pump or anything like that fail on it. And so it's been virtually maintenance-free for us. Um, moving on to the Gen 4 common problems, one of the kind of biggest issues and reliability concerns with these is active fuel management. Um, active fuel management leads to a lot of excessive oil consumption issues, but one of the more kind of noteworthy uh, problems associated with it is that it can and does commonly cause lifter failure, which is a more significant um, and more costly, more difficult to deal with repair. And so active fuel management um, is something that we usually recommend disabling. First of all, you know, while the fuel mile, uh, you know, gas mileage savings are nice, um, I personally don't want to have a V8 truck that runs as if it's a V4. Um, however, it does create a lot of reliability issues, which is why we generally recommend disabling it, um, which we'll talk about in another video. Um, but alongside that, the only other kind of real common problem that we have with these engines is carbon buildup and carbon buildup results in the number one and number seven spark plugs fouling. And this has to do with AFM along with the PCV valve, um, kind of in conjunction with a bad uh, valve cover design. And so uh, for whatever reason, this can cause um, excess oil to get, into, um, to get into the cylinders and it would cause uh, carbon buildup around um, the piston ring groups, and then this would result in the number one and number seven spark plugs fouling. Um, however, this, this issue was uh, specific to 2007 to 2011 5.3 Vortex, uh, because after that they did change the valve cover design, which made this not an issue. Um, if you are having a, a problem with your two spark plugs, number one and seven, frequently going bad, then deactivating or disabling AFM will take care of that. Um, overall, again, not a whole lot of issues with the Gen 4. So it is also an extremely reliable um, and extremely capable engine. Um, it does have an aluminum block instead of a cast iron one, so it's slightly less strong than the Gen 3. However, we haven't ever seen any issues with 
uh, the block or the internals on these engines. And so the major engine components here for the most part are safe with the exception of the lifters and the problems that can be caused by your lifters going bad because of active fuel management. So overall, I would say that Gen 3 5.3 Vortec is slightly more reliable than the Gen 4s uh, purely because of active fuel management. Um, with that being said, you know, disabling active fuel management um, or you know, getting lucky and not having any issues with it. Um, and you can you know, easily see these cars go well into the 300,000 mile mark as well. And so while it is slightly less reliable, these are still uh, very reliable engines in our opinion. Um, so that wraps it up for our video on the 5.3 Vortec. If you appreciate uh, the content we create and the information that we provide you guys, we'd appreciate it if you could like this video, subscribe, and uh, stay tuned for everything else we have to come.